What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Today we're going all the way back to 1957 as we check out this classic Ravel monogram 1957 Chevy hardtop. Now, I do believe this model kit originally came out in the 70s, I'd say around like 1978, but I'm not exactly sure right now, so I'll just leave whatever date it is up here. I'm uh, uploading a video, so I can't really check. So I found this one sitting in my wife's collection in a different box. So I just kind of added this box on the top, which I think is the correct one, and away we go. So here we are. This is a model kit molded in 124 scale for ages 10 and up, skill level 2. On this side of the box top, we get the length of the model, which is 8 and 3 eighths long. It's got 98 pieces in it, molded in white with water slide decals. Again, a really cool model kit. It has the fuel injected motor in it. Unfortunately, it's in 124th scale and not one at 25th. So you can't really swap it between other Chevys. Um, it's got flat black paint, aluminum, orange, satin black, satin white, silver, gold, and red. Those are the colors we need to paint it. It doesn't have these in the box. Turning the box on this side, we see this is a skill level 2 kit for ages 10 and up. Glue is required and painting is required. There's that nice 1957 fuel injected Chevy motor, the first year for this actual engine. And then we get a nice rear three quarter shot of the back. Now we can open up this model car and see what's inside the box. And here we have our simple instruction sheet and inside are the decals. So I'll let Danny the dog show those to you. And then we have the interior tub. We've also got our body, which is really nice. There's the glass in a bag. Now I do believe we were working on this kit together, but I'm not quite sure. There's the undercarriage. Then we've got this parts tree with our engine block and rear axle on it. Then we've got our custom bucket seats and our hood on there. We also have this one with the exhaust manifolds. There's the hood hinge just wrapped up in here. Then we've got our chrome parts tree. And we also have the front bench seat. My wife glued this one together. So there you go. And then we've got our wheels and wheel backs, which are the only thing that we painted in this kit. And then right here, where is it? Let's see. Oh, in this corner are the nice chrome mag wheels. Thank you for introducing me, Trevor. Okay, there's not too much I can say on this model kit instruction sheet. There's not very many uh, steps involved. So here we have the front page, just says 57 Chevy hardtop. No nice little drawing up there or anything of the car. And then it's got the read the instructions and uh, after you cut off the parts and blah blah, all that kind of stuff on there. And the copyright is 1998, so this model came out around that time. So in panels 1 and 2 we've got our engine build up. And uh, Julie went in here and got all the letters off of this paint chart and added them in down below. So what we have is a two-piece fuel injector unit, and we've got a two-piece engine block with the uh, transmission back here, and then our actual gearbox. That's our bell housing. So there's our oil pan going up underneath. we got cylinder heads and valve covers. We also have exhaust manifolds with the pipe molded on, the fan, the pulleys, the water pump, and our generator. And there's even an oil filler spout. Now, if you don't want the stock version here with the old fuel injection, you can also get this Crossram intake manifold. You, there's two carburetors that will glue on and two inlets. And then we also have our oil filler pipe going on. And uh, there's our headers going on the sides. Panel 3 shows our simple chassis assembly. So there you have the chassis, you've got the upper A-arms, they pop in place. And then you've got your steering linkage up there and brace. Now there's two different ways to build your rear axle. This one is for the uh, custom. You get a different back end on there. The axle is one piece with the drive shaft and springs attached. And then you got your shock absorbers going in there. And these little blocks actually raise up the back axle. If you want to build it stock, you've got the same differential and spring assembly. Lower shock absorbers because it's the stock height and the back little differential cover and all that will glue right onto your chassis here. Panel 4 shows our completed engine assembly being dropped into the chassis 
And then where the exhaust manifolds are, they link up on the bottom of the mufflers. Panel 5 shows your choice between these stock wheels or the nice daisy style mag wheels. And then you've got these Goodyear radial tires actually. And a backing plate and the retainer clip. And all these will glue onto the axle pins. Same as up front. Panel 6 shows our interior going together. Now the first illustration is the stock interior and the second one is the street machine style. So there we've got a nice interior tub. You got a steering column with the levers on which is always nice. Then you've got the dashboard and the steering wheel goes on top of the column and the two-piece bench seat. Now if you're building the custom version you've got a CB radio which glues up underneath the dashboard. The same steering wheel and the shift lever going on there. And then uh, there you got two bucket seats dropping in place. You got your floor shifter. Oh, and if you don't want to use the uh, gear selector, you leave off the floor shifter and uh, keep that lever on there. But if you want to use the floor shifter, you got to cut off your gear shift lever, uh, which I think is on the inside. The outside is a turn signal lever, so don't uh, cut off your turn signals. <laughs> and then you've got your nice uh, roll cage in the back, and that's a fire extinguisher molded in place. Now panel 7 is a little bit optional, so the uh, optional part is cutting out this blank in the hood, and that would be so you could put on this three-piece hood scoop, but if you don't want to do that and you want it stock, you just glue the hinge on instead. Panel 8 shows the stock version of the hood being hooked into the body. Panel 9 shows the roof glass being hooked in. There's a couple little hooks on the front of the windshield, those will hold in the hood hinges. Panel 10 shows our chassis and interior being hooked into the body. And panel 11 shows the radiator support wall being glued in place. And then there's the battery which will glue on there and the upper radiator hose which connects to the hole in the motor. Panel 12 shows our stock antenna being mounted on the front fender. And then we have the option of the chrome plated factory stock little bullets that go into the hood. Or you can use these blanks instead, which will make that look streamlined. And then we've got our headlight bezel going in there, and then the headlight lens. And again, north and south, east and west, not 45 degree angles. There we've got our grill insert, and the stock bar goes into the three holes. And down below we've got our front license plate. Panel 13 shows our optional CB radio antenna being glued into the center of the trunk lid. And then you've got your rear taillights going on. You have to paint transparent red in the lenses. And then down below you've got your bumper. And we've also got some red going in there and some flat black here because I do believe the exhaust pipes exited out the rear bumper. And then you've got your license plate gluing on the back. Thank you, Danny, for going over those instructions. So now I'm going to show you what this model kit really looks like. There's a lot of really nice detail in this for the vintage of it again. Like on the sides you actually get the aluminum insert panel that went in on the Bel Airs with the nice Bel Air script. The uh, molding is really nice. There's also the fuel injected crossed flags up here in the fenders. So again if I bring this up you can see those right there. You've got the molded in door latch and the handle. The roof is really great looking. Now there are some uh, mold marks going up here off the trim, so you're going to have to get your hobby knife or file right in there just on that spot between the end of this molding and the actual windshield frame, which again has a little bit of a disjoint right in there. So one side is up a little higher and this is a little lower. Windshield wipers on here are nice. They actually look to scale. The sad part is the firewall in the back here is very plain, as is the inner wheel aprons. But that is typical for monogram model kits. They're meant to be put together nice and easy, but the detail is a bit lacking. Underneath here are mold marks, which again need to be scraped out with at a number 11 hobby blade. But the trunk lid off the back looks right. It's got the proper Chevrolet V8 crest on there. And you can see there's the seam lines along the bottom of that trunk lid, which again need to be scraped down and cleaned up. But overall, for the vintage of the kit and the simplicity of it, it's still a top-notch model. Here we have a simplistic version of the chassis for a 57 Chevy. 
And there's most of it is done, unlike the AMT55 Nomad kit where the horns just go straight out. Here we actually have the cross brace in here and the upper A-arm panel. And then we've got dual exhausts in here which are molded in, so you're going to have to use your paintbrush and really uh, go along here carefully. We've also got the gas tank in the back and our spare tire holder. Again, very simplistic, but uh, nicely done. Nice and crisp on here. Should be easy for someone to put this together. Underneath, we've got the monogram copyright logo in there. And uh, some mold marks again. So just make sure that everything is nice and flush in here before you start gluing things together to it so that nothing sticks up that uh, shouldn't. The next piece we can look at is our interior tub. And again, this is quite nicely done. Although we've got a mold mark on the front little carpet area, two of them. There's all our petals. Now these sort of taper down, as you can see, so you're going to have to paint the tops like squares and not this bottom portion, because that won't look right. The only uh, one you can paint all the way to the bottom is the gas pedal, and that would be quite correct. The side molding detail is quite soft in here, but there is a texture. You just have to be really careful when you uh, paint in here that you, well, that you actually aim into the door handles. Now here we've got our nice correct Bel Air type upholstery in there, which is really wonderful. You got a mold mark in the back, a little bit of discoloration here, so that is mold release agent. Always make sure that you clean up your parts before you put them in the kit. And underneath is quite nice and crisp. There's no mold marks. Two little locator pins in here for our chassis. Now speaking of which, I'm just going to back the camera all the way out here. I brought our chassis in so you can see where those little pins fit in. They go nicely in those little holes up underneath like that. And then what you would do is you would put your bench seat in here like that. It's a nice two-piece bench seat. My wife glued it together. There is a mold mark right here. Now unlike the AMT kits, this one just has the carpet detail all the way across. The AMT one has the uh, carpet separated in here with a little bit of raised plastic. So let's not uh, worry about that for a minute. Now if you look, there's those two little tabs in the back. They will hook into these two little pins on our body. Just like so. There we go. And then with our chassis in place, we turn this over. you got to spread the sides out a bit to get this all to go together. And it'll click in place. So again, this is a nice tight fit in here. And another thing that I noticed just now, it's got the MMI copyright on there. Monogram Models Incorporated. So let's just bring that up. There, you can see it right in there. So that again is something you can scrape out with that number 16 hobby blade. But overall, everything goes together nice and crisp inside there. And uh, makes for a nice three-piece assembly. This parts tree shows our street machine components as well as some of the factory stock components like our dashboard and our steering column with the shift lever and gear stick on it. There we've got our front timing chain cover. Here's our transmission. We've got our roll cage with the uh, fire extinguisher on there. Belts and pulleys. The rear of our transmission here, the bell housing. And then uh, we've got our CB radio, so you know this is a 70s kit. We also have our hood here and our fan. These are the hood blanks which would go in there. And then our shock absorbers and oil filler cap. So let's just take a quick look at that dashboard. Again, really nicely done. Really represents the 57 Chevy nicely. Underneath our hood, we've got the little sunken indentation part. That's what we cut out for putting in the hood scoop. There's some mold marks under here which must be corrected. Overall, though, not bad. Look at our little CB radio. <laughs> breaker, breaker. Okay, there we go. So again, nicely done. Next up, we've got the parts tree that includes a rear differential, drive shaft, and springs. Make sure you hook this into the end of that transmission. There's our Chevy engine and two components, as well as our oil pan and the differential cover for the stock version. Here's our four little riser blocks which glue underneath the springs for our street machine. And then we've got our radiator and our radiator walls. Again, very nicely done. Look at how far down that axle would drop on those springs. 
We also have our hood hinge in here, which is really wonderful. Uh, there's a couple of raised mold marks on here that need to be sanded down just to make this thing open properly. But overall, again, looking at there, nice detail on the components and just fun overall. A simple Chevy you could build in an evening. This parts tree includes our custom and stock headers, as well as the front uh, stabilizer bar and tie rod end. We've got the custom springs or shock absorbers for the back. And then the front, there's a bit of seam lines in here and uh, flash, which you'll have to clean up. Then we've got our valve or cylinder head covers, pardon me, and our battery. I'm not sure actually where the cylinder heads are. Maybe they're chrome components. But overall, again, nicely done by Monogram, a quick, simple kit that you can get out in a weekend, which is also good for uh, skill level two entry for the kids. A little more challenging, of course. Mold buttons underneath here, which need to be removed. But again, overall, nicely done from Monogram. So here we can look at our chrome parts tree, and I'm not exactly sure if this is the original one that comes in the kit. We have these nice centerline mag wheels. So I do believe these are from a 1983 sort of edition of this chrome parts tree. I'm not sure where the stock hubcaps are that are in the instruction sheet. So I do suspect this one was switched out a little, but it does seem that these are the only uh, difference from the actual stock. So the deviant wheels, I guess. Now here you've got this nice center piece. You'll have to paint your Chevy logo in here. Um, one side has red on the top and then red on the bottom. I'm not quite sure which is which on which side. This would be white and white. And then inside you got the blue bow tie, of course. This all goes into the front bumper section. These little bumperettes will be painted with flat black. And then across the back bumper as well. There's our dual carburetors for our ram intake. The floor mounted shifter, the chrome on the back. And then we've got that nice intake manifold. This one's a high-rise style. Uh, not sure where the fuel injected manifold is actually. So uh, again, that's uh, quite interesting. You got a high-rise manifold and in those injectors. So something's not quite right. This is not quite the chrome, but mostly the chrome, if you know what I mean. Mold mark on the back, which you'd have to remove, and one in the back rear bumper. I do believe what's happening here is. I must have pirated these parts for making a fully stock version. I've got a few of these sitting on the shelf behind me, but um, whatever. It's going to be okay. We'll all live, I think. Now, this brace bar in here in the center, that's not actually supposed to be on there like that. <clears throat> what needs to happen is you have to clip this off the parts tree. You need to find out how this locates to the front of the car. Now, the hood is actually supposed to have the chrome lip on the end. So what you would need to do is take your number 16 hobby blade, caref or a pin even, in your uh, drill, and uh, like a sewing pin, and carefully go along here and scribe it. And then find out where the hood gets in here, there and there. You'll need to saw down there and there, and carefully scribe with the pin in here. And then you glue the chrome onto the lip of the hood so that all this will open up with the hood, just like on the real thing. These bumperettes are actually a custom option, a factory custom option, that plugged in. On the actual bumper, there's a, a T inside there with a little hole. So that's kind of how those rubber things were put on. Optional. Then again, there's the front with the turn signals and that nice bar. Again, the uh, quality here is typical of Ravel monogram. Actually, more monogram. <clears throat> and you get all the nice rivets and bolts and everything on those American mag wheels. So again, this is really nicely done. It's uh, kind of too bad I don't have the fuel injection set up on this chrome parts tree. But this is the level that you expect in these kits. Now here's something that I just discovered in another box. My wife and I have a few of these Chevy kits together, the uh, monogram one, of course, and here's the alternate chrome parts tree. Now, if you look, this one has a fuel injection set up here, and this is the one that I just showed with the centerline wheels going down the side. So uh, that's kind of what happened. Something got switched in a box here. So let's take a look at this again. 
We have the nice Chevrolet valve covers going on here. There's the little spears that go into the trunk lid. Or sorry, the hood. Pardon me. There's the uh, dual intake manifold, and here's our fuel injection one with a little side bit as well. There's those nice stock hubcaps and the daisies again. So uh, take a look at those stock hubcaps. That's the last time you're ever going to see them. No, I'm just kidding. No, uh, actually, they do look quite nice. They are a nice representation of the 57 hubcap. And then um, there's that fuel injection setup. You can see just how tall it is. The notch is for this to go in. That's got the hose and everything going up to the radiator and the uh, fuel pump in there. There's the dual carburetors and the intakes. So again, it kind of depends on which version of this kit you're getting, but this is the alternate parts tree. You've got the uh, stock antenna and the CB antenna in there as well. Again, though, very nicely detailed from Monogram and really excellent chrome. Now here's a really cool piece of glass that's typical of the old days. You get all the windows molded as one piece. There's our front windshield and the little side wings. And this is molded with a bridge right across to the rear window. Inside here we've got our headlights and it looks like there might be some mold release agent in here. You can see that little orange dot in the center. Hopefully that'll clear up. And then we've got the little hooks in front to hook onto that hood hinge. All you got to do is cut off this and cut off this and cut in here and clean up where you cut off. You've got a little hole for a rear view mirror as well. Overall, this is quite nice. It would be nice if they had to put this in a bag. There is a little bit of a scratch in there. You've got to use your uh, wax to get rid of that. But overall, it's simple and easy to install. Now, there is one thing that I've noticed with these Chevy kits from Monogram. Some of them come with the stock wheels, and others come with those centerline mag wheels. So there is a bit of a deviancy between the kits, depending on which one you buy. I happen to have a few of these, so it doesn't really matter to me. But what we have here is we've got these Goodyear radial steel belted radial tires. And we also have these Goodyear radial GTs. Now the GT tires are going to come in with the parts tree that has these chrome wheels in them, the American mag wheel style, because they fit in there nicely. And the uh, deviation is the chrome parts tree like this one that has the stock wheels and those daisy wheels. So that is the big difference. The daisy wheels and the stock wheels will fit into these taller, thinner, narrower radials. And the center lines fit into the wider radial GT tires like this one. So again, it depends on which model you're building and which way you want to build it. But the wheel back should fit into both tires. And uh, that's what we really want there. So just put that over there. And then our daisy wheels would fit into these. So I'm just going to move these components off to the side here. Okay, and we'll just take a look at these tires one by one. So again, the nice thin steel belted radials have that nice uh, tread pattern on there if the camera can focus in. You have to clip them off these parts trees and then use your spinning tool and the sandpaper just like up here and spin these things down. You can see a lot of flash in there. That's pretty ugly. <laughs> but these tires have been in the uh, molds forever. There is actually a a uh, parts tree with tires only on it and that's what AMT and uh, Monogram and all those guys keep using over and over it's a separate parts tree for tires it really has nothing to do with uh, like the chrome components and whatnot like that it's a uh, it's its own beast <laughs> so really what you need to do again is spin off these uh, parting lines and cut these little things off there and you'll have a wonderful set of tires. Monogram makes some really good ones so there you go. Hey it's Danny the dog again and what I've got here is the decal sheet for 57 Chevy. This one's really cool because you've got these color changing flames here. They started with a uh, dark red and then go to orange and then a little bit of white on the tips and you see here you got this nice long line this goes underneath the trim, and that is really cool. Then you've got the uh, flames for the hood scoop, 
and on the back trunk lid. So again, really cool decal sheet. Unfortunately, there's no license plates on here, so you can switch a car to any state or province that you want. Well, I hope you enjoyed that look at our Ravel Monogram 1957 Chevrolet hardtop. Now, I know this was quite a simplistic kit to put together, and a really nice one because Monogram is just like that. But if you would like a more complex version of the 57 Chevy, check out this cool one from AMT that's right over here. That'll be coming up soon. And uh, I thank you again for checking out our model car kit. And if you would like to see what models we have for sale right now at Monster Hobbies, check it out by going to www.monster-hobbies.ca. You can also click this link down here that's coming up to take you directly over. And don't forget to subscribe with this little link right here. So until next time, everybody, happy model building. Thank you, everybody, for watching our model car unboxing video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel with all your friends and family. And if you really want to show your support, click that join button right below this video. Until next time, everyone. Happy model building!